Hi, it's Master Building with Kaylee. Our trip to Harry Potter Land in Universal. I thought I would just read a little bit from the first Harry Potter book, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone by J.K. Rowling. Chapter 1. The Boy Who Lived. Mr. and Mrs. Dursley, of number 4 Privet Drive, were proud to say that they were perfectly normal. Thank you very much. They were the last people you'd expect to be involved in anything strange or mysterious because they just didn't hold with such nonsense. Moving ahead a little bit in the story, we come to... Fancy seeing you here, Professor McGonagall. He turned to smile at the tabby, but it had gone. Instead, he was smiling at a rather severe-looking woman who was wearing square glasses, exactly the shape of the markings the cat had had around its eyes. She, too, was wearing a cloak, an emerald one. Her black hair was drawn into a tight bun. She looked distinctly ruffled. "'How did you know it was me?' she asked. "'My dear professor,' I've never seen a cat sit so stiffly. You'd be stiff if you'd been sitting on a brick wall all day, said Professor McGonagall. Skipping ahead. Would you care for a sherbet lemon? A what? A sherbet lemon. They're a kind of muggle sweet I'm rather fond of. No, thank you, said Professor McGonagall coldly as though she didn't think this was the moment for sherbet lemons. As I say, even if you know who has gone, my dear professor, surely a sensible person like yourself can call him by his name. All this you-know-who nonsense. For eleven years, I have been trying to persuade people to call him by his proper name, Voldemort. Professor McGonagall flinched, but Dumbledore, who was unsticking two sherbet lemons, seemed not to notice. It all gets so confusing if we keep saying you know who. I have never seen any reason to be frightened of the saying Voldemort's name. I know you haven't, said Professor McGonagall, sounding half exasperated, half admiring. But you're different. Everyone knows you're the only one you know. All right, Voldemort was frightened. You flatter me, said Dumbledore calmly. Voldemort had powers I will never have. Only because you're too, well, noble to use them. And skipping ahead a little bit. Hagrid's bringing you. You think it wise to trust Hagrid with something as important as this? I would trust Hagrid with my life, said Dumbledore. I'm not saying his heart isn't in the right place, said Professor McConaughey grudgingly. But you can't pretend he's not careless. He does tend to... What was that? A low, rumbling sound had broken the silence around them. It grew steadily louder as they looked up and down the street for some sign of a headlight. It swelled to a roar as they both looked up at the sky, and a huge motorbike fell out of the air and launched, landed on the road in front of them. Hagrid, said Dumbledore, sounding relieved. At last... And where did you get that motorbike? Borrowed it, Professor Dumbledore, sir, said the giant, climbing carefully off the motorbike as he spoke. Young Sirius Black lent it to me. I got him here, sir. No problems were there? No, sir. The house was almost destroyed, but I got him out all right before the muggles started swarming around. He fell asleep as we were flying over Bristol. What a wonderful, magical story J.K. Rawlings has brought to us in Harry Potter. I'm just going to look through a few charms and spells now. Charmed, I'm sure. The notion that a charm can affect us in a magical or enchanting way has given way to many charming phrases and expressions. A smooth operator can charm the pants off someone or charm a bird from a tree. Quaint towns have old-world charm. 
and music according to English playwright William Conrove has charms to soothe a savage breast. That's true, so true about charms. And in Harry Potter, license to curse. From ancient times to modern, those wishing to harm an enemy often sought help from a professional, a village wizard or witch, who, with a reputation for creating and delivering effective curses. People who knew they had been cursed often felt symptoms, probably because the fear and anxiety instilled by the very notion of a curse were enough to bring on nausea, vomiting, headaches, insomnia, and other ills. Wow. Well, we know in Harry Potter there's a lot of curses. Potions, charms, and curses. And what about Voldemort's name? That which must be named. J.K. Rowling once shared with fans the difficulty she encountered when trying to invent a word for the container in which a dark wizard had hidden a fragment of his soul. A quote from J.K. Rowling. I had tried for days and days to hit upon the right name. Finally, after much transposition of syllables, I scribbled Horcrux on a piece of paper, and I knew it was the right one. The first syllable comes from horribleus, meaning horrible or dreadful, and the second syllable comes from the word crux, the Latin word crux meaning cross, and by association, torture or torment. This potent combination gives us a word steeped in horror and pain, qualities associated with the Dark Lord and the making of a horcrux. Wow. The detail that went into the Harry Potter story. No wonder they were so magical for us. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Bye-bye.